For further study, you can download the full manual for the Harbor Freight Pressure Washer at the end of the video. <laughs> Welcome to Brygen. Enjoy the video. These are the parts that are included in the box, and we are ready to assemble it. First, we attach the handle with four screws which are included. Then slide the hose handle into the slot on back of the machine. Next, assemble the spray gun handle. Notice the green button, which depending on which way it is pushed, the trigger will either be in a lock position or an unlock position. The green slide on the bottom of the handle will lock the pressure hose in place when it is assembled. A small soap dispenser can be attached to the handle if you want to suds the surface prior to pressure washing the surface. Prior to inserting it into the handle, lubricate the o-ring. We use a brake lubricant which is suited for o-rings. Just take a little dab and spread it on the o-ring. Then insert the soap dispenser into the handle by pushing it in and twisting to lock position. The catch is that you have to remove it and reattach it any time you want to soap something. A spray attachment can't be attached to the soap dispenser because the soap isn't siphoned like other designs of pressure washers where you can have both hooked up at the same time. To remove the soap dispenser, push it in, twist, and pull out. The nozzle will turn in both directions to adjust the spray depending on what is needed for a particular project. The extension nozzle attachment looks like it was shipped with some lubricant. Just spread the lubricant evenly on the o-ring. Then attach it to the handle by inserting, pushing, and twisting into a lock position. Since the o-ring that is on the 20-foot high pressure hose doesn't have any lubricant, we will apply some to it so that it will seal properly when assembled. Take the cap off the hose connector, which is located at the bottom of the front of the machine. Push the hose connector in and screw on to secure it. Then hang the hose on the holder. For storage purposes, insert the soap dispenser into hole on back side of the machine. The handle and extension nozzle can be taken apart and stored in the slots on top of the machine. We test our water pressure and flow rate prior to connecting the water hose to the machine, which can be seen in another Brygen video. Prior to connecting any water hoses, we add a quick connect adapter to the two ends that will be connected. This makes it easy and quick when connecting and disconnecting hoses. Attach one end of quick connect to the water inlet at the bottom of back of pressure washer. Make sure to add Teflon tape or thread sealant to the threads before twisting in. You can see how fast and easy the other end of the quick connect adapter is to connect and release. Another gadget we like to add to hose connections is a shutoff valve to make it easier to turn the water on and off without having to run back to turn it off at the faucet. We add quick connect adapters to it also. For demonstration purposes, we don't have the water turned on yet. We connect the shutoff valve assembly to the water inlet on bottom back of washer. Then connect our water hose to the adapter. Then you'll have your on-off spigot in a handy position. When you turn your water off here, then you can disconnect the hose and still have the water turned on in the hose and it doesn't spray everywhere. Now we have the shutoff valve on the hose we are using and have turned the water on. Before connecting the water hose to the machine, turn valve on to make sure water is flowing. Then turn valve off. Then connect the water to the machine. The instruction book says to use a CFI receptacle for added safety feature in addition to the one that is built into the machine's plug. We plug an extension cord into it and then plug the electric cord from the machine into the extension cord. After you plug the cord in, press the red reset button and you'll see a quick indicator light. Then press test, then reset again and light is back on and you're ready to go. If you would need to turn off, press white button and the light will go off. Because we are using an extension cord, we're not uncoiling the electric cord and we'll keep the plug on the hose hanger to keep it up away from any water that may be on the ground. Put the handle and extension nozzle together. Push the pressure hose into the handle and push the green slider to lock the hose in place. Turn the water on at the adapter. Point the nozzle in a safe direction and bleed the line. Then turn power switch on front of the machine to on. The motor will run only when you pull the trigger to engage the spray gun. The first thing we are going to demonstrate the pressure washer on is our garden shed. We have used Thompson's water seal on the finish to protect it and it's supposed to age naturally, eventually turning into an aged gray color. It's been a slow aging process, 10 years so far. The weathered side is aging quicker. The shed hasn't been cleaned for a few years when we last cleaned it to put a fresh coat of sealer on it and it has attracted a lot of dirt since then. We'll do a white towel test to see how much dirt has accumulated. We'll try again after we wash it. We'll spray it with plain water first. You can see that if you use the nozzle too close, the pressure of the water will damage the wood. So make sure you don't point it at anyone as you could cause injury. If you look close, you can see dirty water running down the siding. Again, you can see the damage that can be caused if you use the nozzle too close to the wood. We would not recommend using this particular pressure washer on a nice vehicle so as to avoid damage to its paint surface. 
The adjustable nozzle is unpredictable, and it occasionally moves to spray it at full power unintentionally. If you insist on using it on a vehicle, either keep a distance from your vehicle, or purchase a more expensive electric model that uses interchangeable spray nozzles. This was the dirt test prior to rinsing the siding, and this is after rinsing. You can see that some dirt was removed, but not very much, so we'll apply some soap. Add a multi-purpose pressure wash concentrate. Spray some soap on and let it soak for 5 minutes. You can see the soap is used up pretty quickly, so you'll have to fill the bottle often. After a few minutes, use the rinse cycle washer. Now that the siding has had time to soak, the pressure washer can work to remove some of the build-up black dirt and green mold on it. You can see the difference between the bottom board, which has been cleaned, versus the board above it, which hasn't been done yet. There is a noticeable difference. The pressure does a good job of removing the green mossy buildup at the bottom of the shed. Now that the wood has dried after soaping and rinsing, we'll do the white towel test again. There is still some dirt, but a good bit has come off. If you want to have a deeper clean, a brush could be used to lift some of the dirt between the soap and rinse cycles. These are the porch posts on the shed, which are a different type of wood. The washer works pretty good with just the water cycle to remove the buildup dirt. Watch for an upcoming in-depth gas pressure washer video on our channel if you are interested. Now we're going to see how well the pressure washer can clean a lawn ornament that has gotten pretty dirty over the years. It's made of a hard plastic of some sort. We are using a few cement blocks to brace the ornament against the pressure of the water blast. We're just using water and no soap and adjusting the nozzle to different sprays to find bond that works well. It's working really well and takes the ugly green and black dirt off. This is how the lawn ornament turned out just by using the water cycle and adjusting the nozzle spray. It looks so much better now. Now we'll try the machine on a dirty sidewalk. We'll use just the water cycle and try the different nozzle settings to see if we can remove the discolorment. It does a pretty decent job of removing the discolorment, which you can see by looking at the difference between what we just did and the section that wasn't done yet. Watch for an upcoming electric versus gas pressure washer video on our channel if you're interested. Our last test is on the wood house siding, which has accumulated mildew. We'll use the wet cycle and adjust the nozzle to a setting that will remove some of the mildew. It doesn't do too bad of a job with just water. One thing you have to be careful of is to not move the nozzle too close to the siding, especially if it is wood, because it will remove the paint in the thin areas. The house is already past due for a new paint job as it is. When shutting off the machine, press the green button on the handle to the lock position. Turn a power knob on front of the machine to the off position. Turn off your water. Unplug the electric cord. Point the spray gun in a safe direction. Press the green button on the handle to the unlock position and press trigger to release the pressure. Then disconnect the water. Disconnect the pressure hose on front of the machine and from the spray gun. Disconnect the nozzle extension from the handle and drain the water. Tilt the water out of the machine from the front and the back. It's recommended to clean the nozzle after each use. Take the wire nozzle cleaning tool that comes with the machine. Screw off the nozzle and clean it by inserting the tool into the little pinhole in the front of the nozzle. Then back flush the nozzle with a little water. When you are done using the machine for the season, it needs to be flushed before storing it. Take RV antifreeze that contains no alcohol. Lay the machine on its front side, plug it in, push the red button. Turn a power dial on the front of the machine to the on position and pour a little antifreeze in the water inlet hole on the back of the machine. Do this for as short a time as possible and turn the dial to off. This circulates the antifreeze through the machine. If you don't flush the system before storage, your machine won't last very long. If you leave water in the machine, it will corrode the pump. You may also choose to flush the machine after each use, which is what we do, especially if there are extended periods between each use. This inexpensive machine is fine if you want to just blast away at everything with full power. Its only drawback is the single adjustable spray nozzle. It can unexpectedly readjust to full power on its own. But if you need control of the pressure for delicate work, you should look at more expensive electric models that incorporate interchangeable spray nozzles. We would be hesitant to use a sprayer on our vehicles. We hope this video has provided you with insight for your adventure. Go to bridgen.xyz or our channel for more fun videos and information. Thanks for watching.